Well, President Trump is now halfway through his first hundred days in office. The president has certainly made good on his promise to shake things up in Washington, pleasing his supporters and ruffling a lot of feathers in the process. So what is a presidential historian's take on Mr. Trump's presidency thus far? We've got one right here. Doug Weed just published a book on Mr. Trump's big win and Hillary Clinton's failed White House bid. The title is clever. Game of Thorns. <laughs> Doug, uh, first of all, let's take a look. We're 50 days into this presidency. Uh, give us your take on what Mr. Trump has accomplished thus far. Well, I think he's <laughs> I think he's doing great. I mean, they, they trying to hold him out as uh, ridiculing him for saying that his predecessor was spying on him. But as you will read in Game of Thorns, uh, the last president who accused their predecessor of spying on them was Bill and Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton was convinced that the dear old sweet George Herbert Walker Bush was spying on them in the White House. Of course, he in fairness, he was director of the CIA, but Hillary demanded a sweep of the private quarters of the White House by the Secret Service, wasn't satisfied. You can read all this in Game of Thorns. Got the FBI to do the same thing. They became estranged from the FBI, and so they finally created their own White House personnel security office, policed it with their own campaign people, accessed all these old files of their political enemies, including me. My, my file was in the batch, some 800 files of Reagan Bush uh, 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 workers and staffers. Uh, so we've seen all this before. And the, if, if, if it's true, Trump is stumbling. So is the national media in their effort to discredit him, because one night they say, hey, he's kind of, uh, uh, this is absurd and ridiculous. He thinks his predecessor spied on him. The next night, they tell us that Samsung <laughs> TV the CIA is looking at us through Samsung TVs. So maybe Trump is uh, on to something good the, to bring this up. The point that gets made again and again is that the president has offered no evidence for it. It was just kind of a Saturday morning tweet storm in which he accused his predecessor of, of tapping his phones. That's right. And there was no evidence that <laughs> the Clintons had no evidence that George H.W. Bush was tapping them in the White House, too. This is, I guess, uh, a natural a question that you'd want to bring up and get resolved. Uh, to, it, to, this goes way back, John, in history. Uh, w we had a president they said was a spy of a foreign power. A foreign power got him elected and they were manipulating. Immigration was a big issue. And that was John Adams, who was supposed to be a spy of the United Kingdom or of England and immigration. One of the alien sedition acts was that you had to be a citizen in the United States for 14 years, an immigrant for 14 years before you could be accepted as a citizen. So we've debated these things for years and we get hysterical. I, I can't believe that the Russians are using Donald Trump as a puppet. And the first thing they ask him to do is increase military spending. It's just a bit far fetched for me. There's an article <laughs> in National Journal today written written by an esteemed political reporter, uh, Charlie Cook. And the title is Trump Walks the Political High Wire. And Charlie Cook writes, so while many of us can watch things that Trump does with shock and even horror, we need to keep an open mind about the outcome. As he showed during the presidential campaign, he can be crazy like a fox. Absolutely. And in Game of Thorns, uh, show that very clearly. She had 960,000 ground games. She outstaffed him five to one, outspent him eight to one, had 240 newspapers endorse her to his 19. But he had something she didn't have, earned media and the message. I would call over to Trump Tower. I would say, you guys are off message. They said, no, we aren't. You don't know the message. I'd say, OK, tell me the message. They said, the message is make America great again. And the second part of the message is I'm not a politician. And all these rough edges you see that everybody's getting excited about are reinforcing the point that this is not a politician. We've had three politicians in a row and the poor got poor, the rich got richer. We lost free enterprise practically. So we the people who want Donald Trump want him to shake things up. We got uh, we have time for one more uh, tweet from the president. He says, don't let the fake news tell you that there is big infighting in the Trump administration. We are getting along great and getting major things done. They are getting some things done. 
Uh, the question, are they getting along great? I, I guess that's uh, for the future to determine. But <laughs> you spoke to him for this book. You spoke to him just a couple of days before the election, and he, he was telling you he was going to win, right? He was saying he was going to win, and he's a very positive person. And Melania was very, is very impressive to me. She sat down with him, and, and she said, uh, look, we have such a good life. Why do you want to do this? We've worked so hard. This is a perfect life. And he said, I've got to do this. I, I would be so good good at this. And she said, well, if you want to do it, you have to do it, but you be prepared. You're going to win. <laughs> mm. Fascinating. It's a, it's an interesting read. Game of Thorns. Check out the book. Presidential Thanks, historian Doug Weed. Uh, Game of Thorns. It's all about uh, the campaign between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton and how he pulled it off. Doug, thank you. Thank you, John.